Hello everyone, final community members, this is Blake, Words TV 71 I'm back, and this time, as you can tell by the title, um, I'm here to answer my own thread, um, as promised. So, as stated in the, the book recommendation thread, uh, I'm a big a big fan of, of books and I've been collecting books for for a long long time um, you probably can see behind me here some of my books probably my better books in this shelf and I got another shelf like it over there um, but that's not what this is about um, so I have a stack of books here that I want to recommend um, and what I'll do is I'll post this in two posts so it won't get terribly long and, and in fact the second post will just be kind of classical classically related material so if you're not interested in classical you can completely skip the second post but this post this particular one I'm going to focus on a few books that are jazz related folk related and um, just uh, record or music recording in general that, that I think you may be interested in. So, so I'll jump right to it. The first two books that I have um, are about, I guess, the, the for the most part, the early history of recorded music, records and recording. Um, both of them dealing with a cat named Fred Gaysberg. Um, the first one, A Voice in Time, um, this one is a biography written by Gerald Moore, but it's about Fred Gaysberg. Um, and I'll also share this one too because this is an autobiography uh, of Mr. Gaysberg, uh, Music on Record. Um, let me turn Freddie Rhodes down a little bit. Um, this is, uh, I think this has a different title as a U.S. release, but in, in the United Kingdom it was called Music on Record. Uh, but it's, it's essentially an autobiography of, by, of and by Fred Gaysberg, of course. So who's this cat? Um, back when uh, recording what was, was happening with um, Cylinders and Berliner, with his disc uh, format, Fred uh, was a was a, a helper to Berliner, and it just happened to be the case that that Fred was also a very good salesman, and he was chosen to lead the gramophone company's um, foray in Europe. So he got sent over to um, England, um, very very young, and many many folks believe that. He was the one that really, really started uh, the whole idea or the whole uh, industry around recorded music and the idea that the performer wasn't just somebody performing some nice piece of music, but the performer themselves, his or herself or a group, was also um, an important and interesting thing. So... Um, Adelina Patti, uh, Caruso, um, Fred Chrysler, um, others um, were recorded by, by Fred. Discovered, I, I say, and recorded by Fred. Uh, great, great uh, history. Um, you got to read some of the, the wonderful uh, and, and very adventurous trials and tribulations of Fred and his brother as they went around trying to record people on 78, 78 RPM discs in the time and of course he makes it on through to the long playing format so these are two very very good books um, an autobiography A Voice in Time by Gerald Moore and then excuse me a biography <laughs> about Fred Gaysberg by Gerald Moore, A Voice in Time, and then here's an autobiography called Music on Record. Both of them very, very worthwhile to seek out, uh, especially if you're interested in knowing where all of this cool stuff came from. Uh, so, very good start to a uh, an understanding of, of the history. Now, I've shown this before, uh, earlier, when, when I was responding to uh, Chris Dassel Traveler's Folkways video, uh, 
this is a book called Worlds of Sound, um, the story of Smithsonian Folkways um, by Richard Carlin. I'll put all this information in the in the notes below. Um, this is a very, very nice book about uh, the Folkways label. I'll try to just show you just all kinds of great photos and stuff. Very, very, very easy to pick up and read because of the way that it's assembled. Um, both good and bad. Uh, the good is it's very easy to read and, and there's lots of little sections you can just pick up and read and, and they're just about self-contained. The bad is there are a bunch of little sections that are self-contained. So there's there's what I felt to be a lot of repetition. Um, but I guess that goes with the territory. But it's still very good talking about uh, Moses Ash and his creation of Ash uh, label and the Folkways label and lots and lots of good information about the various types of uh, genres he covered uh, predominantly you know folk music and world music you know music from around the world uh, spoken word uh, children's music um, this goes on and on and on lots and lots of good stuff here um, very highly recommended, especially for, for people interested in um, good traditional music, folk music um, from around the world even. Very, very, very good book. Um, world of Sound. Okay, Chasing the Train. I picked this up uh, late last summer and read it through September time frame. Very, very good book about John Coltrane, and, I, and I'm pointing, pick, picking this particular one out because of the way it's written. It's mostly um, assembled through interviews with people that worked with or was related to John Coltrane. It's by J.C. Thomas, as you can tell. Um, I got this used uh, from a used bookstore. It's not it's not a rare book, so it's probably very easy to find uh, on ABE books or even on eBay if you like to do that. Um, very good, uh, very interesting to hear what other people um, said about Coltrane. Um, that alone made this a very very interesting book to uh, to read and and one that I recommend to any uh, any fan of music, not just jazz, um, although. Obviously, if you if you're into jazz and John Coltrane, you'll enjoy this. But just just to hear how other people work with other musicians is very uh, very good read. As I pointed out uh, in my video, I'm I am reading Birds of Fire, and I'm probably a, a, maybe a fifth of the way through it. Very very deep, very very thorough. Like I said earlier, this is essentially a well what seems to be a master's thesis published in a book format i mean it is it is deep and it's got you know of course you've got to have a billion different references to everywhere so if you see anything at all interesting in the material there's almost always a reference to where it came from which is good um very interesting um way this is assembled as i've gathered so far uh He's this the author uh, Kevin Feliz Feliz. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. It's uh, published by Duke University Press. Um, anyway, he's he's going to run through this whole fusion uh, timeline by focusing on uh, the musicians Tony Williams, John McLaughlin. Herbie Hancock, and the one, I, I didn't do this in order because I wanted to leave this one last, Joni Mitchell? <laughs> Joni Mitchell? Okay, so I'm ignorant. I thought Joni was a, a, a folk musician, but apparently she dabbled in some fusion-esque stuff, and I think he's going to, he uses her as a, as a means to show you the in-between um, that that has been happening. And, and so far, very good book, very slow reading. Um, so if you like that and you want to learn more about fusion, I think I could recommend this. I'm enjoying it so far. Now, this is one that 
uh, I just recently got because I needed to. I was trying to work on a jazz record collection, uh, acquiring some stuff, and I needed to know what is original and what is not. Blue Note Records, a guide for identifying original recordings. Uh, apparently, Frederick Cohen is uh, like a a leader, I suppose, in determining uh, or an expert in determining what is an original pressing of a Blue Note release and what is not. And you know, this is a very thin book, and it's very expensive. But like I've said to uh, McSopey, David, in, in a message, the $45 that I paid for this saved me lots when actually trying to make an offer or making an offer on some of the jazz material that, that I've had um, in front of me. So, yes, it, it's very expensive, but it's very good. And they get into all the detail about... Um, how to identify all the different labels. I mean, full of great pictures. I'll see if I can show you some of this stuff. Um, uh, get you some pictures. Pictures. Uh, different stampers that that Van Gelder used to stamp his uh, releases. All the different label formats and what to look for in a label. Um, different packaging and printings of of um, album covers more of that <clears throat> excuse me I'm losing my voice uh, even even to interesting detail about the different versions of the inner sleeve which is which is cool and of course lots more pictures about the label but the most important thing here is that he he lists let's just I'll just show you um, like I want to show you uh, 1577. This is uh, John Coltrane's Blue Train release. Let's see if this will focus on here. Uh, 1577. One side of your, your record needs to be a New York 23 label and the other side a, a West 63rd Street with the Van Gelder stamp script. Um, BR beaded rim and then over here is what you need to look for in in the jacket that's an example of how detailed this is and of course he goes into much detail about how to identify that um, also very cool um, in the back gives you approximate release dates for um, all of the the blue note issues uh, I say all of the blue note I'd say he focuses on Blue Note up to the Liberty uh, period, so probably mid, yeah, mid 60s. Um, but you get an idea of when each of the uh, different catalogs were released. Um, you got to get it if you're if if you're spending money on Blue Note releases and, and you want to know um, what you got in your hands. You got to get this book. Highly, highly recommended. Um, I think, oh yeah, here's Jazz Record Center. Look for them online and you can buy it directly from uh, uh, Cohen, Frederick Cohen. Jazz Record Center. I think it's jazzrecordcenter.com. Highly recommended. All right, one last one for this video. Um, Goldmine's Jazz Album Price Guide. Now, it sucks as a price guide. This is the first edition of this. There's a second edition that I think came out in 2004 or 6. This one was 2000. Again, they suck as real price guides because the prices are ridiculous. Uh, for the most part, they're either way under or they're way over. Um, but what you do get is a very good indication of what someone has released and and what labels to look for um, so I use this more for kind of a discography kind of thing you know this is pre Wikipedia yeah you can find most of it online but when you're out digging um, it's great to have this in the car in case you need to make a run for it um, I'm just saying 
Um, this this particular edition um, can be easily had. I see a lot of them on on uh, eBay. The second edition is supposed to be better um, in terms of a few corrections on errors. It's much more expensive. It's harder to find. I just don't think they printed many of them. I have read that it's not worth it to spend the extra money for the second edition. Get this one. This was this is close enough. Um, so I recommend it purely for informational purposes, not as a price guide. Um, you'll you'll be led very astray uh, in terms of prices here. And uh, I think that'll do it all for now. So. Those are the recommendations, please. If you have questions about these books, um, send me some comments down below. I will put some detailed title and author information in, in the description here. And uh, my next video will be about mostly classical stuff. In fact, all classical uh, music in general and then classical records and then one just about the classical long playing record. So if you don't have any interest in classical, you can skip that guy. Thanks very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing more responses. Uh, very interesting topic. Thanks. Bye bye.